Well, hello guys. I'm at the Inter Classics in Maastricht. And for today, in this little video, I will show you some of the cars I've seen here. And we start with a rather special Jaguar Mark II, because it is not any Jaguar Mark II. Um, it's a Risto mod. Um, it's done by a Dutch company, I guess, Pete Classics. Um, and it's an homage to the Iron Column uh, Mark II rebuild. Um, let's have a quick look inside. It is heavily updated with a red leather interior. Um, the switch gear has kind of changed. There's even a little, uh, little monitor. So it's well, best of both worlds. So I don't know what you think about Risto mods. I do like them quite uh, a lot. It's got a modern sunroof. So let me know what do you think about it. And that is a BMW 3.0 by good old Paul Brack. But you might wondering about its roof because there never was a convertible version um, and well there are two two of uh, this 3.0 CS convertibles have been made by a Dutch company looks quite like an, a serious job and this here doesn't it actually looks good it looks almost factory so by the way, this is the, um, these are the clubs and there is a Simca club, oh, an Aston Martin by the way, and the Simca club delivered with a Talbot Matra Rancho and this was top of the line. This was the Matra Rancho uh, Grand Raid. Um, uh, there is a video on my YouTube channel where I drive a Matra Rancho from the PS Speicher, but it's not a Grand Raid. Uh, the Grand Raid had all the extras and bits like the searchlights, which you need <laughs> in the dense city, right? Um, of course, a spare wheel on the roof, a winch. Um, I think the Grand Raid even had a differential. And it has a slightly, um, slightly raised body. So that is the Grand Raid. Then we have good old Matra Simca Baguera, of course, with three seats. And the rarest of them all is this Simca Horizon. What a special car. Um, so many interesting badges. We have a Chrysler badge, we had the Simca badge, and we have the name Talbot involved. So we are uh, in the middle of all the uh, Chrysler European Operation Chaos PSA involved. Well, all the big names. Um, special car. This has only 1,100 kilometers on the odometer. This car belonged to an old lady and she well, she hit i think a wall and then the car was garaged and this is absolutely special um there was an american version the dodge omni but i've learned today the dodge omni was a very very different car a beautiful sub 99 um, on old Dutch plates. Uh, these dark blue plates are the old fashioned, old styled Dutch plates. Lovely green car accompanied by a awesome 9.5. I love the 9.5, especially the uh, estate. This is the uh, sedan. There we have the 99 from the back. Just have a look at the headrests. Green interior. Yep, that's it. 
Saab 99 and Saab 95. A Volvo Amazon. This is the B18 four-door version and a Volvo 242. Um, 240 series uh, with some posh alloys and I think a lower spec. Um, so some interesting um, details. We have um, headlamp wipers. So this is probably a Swedish market car. It has old Dutch plates, but I'm not sure if these are original. I don't think so. And a grill badge from the uh, Weichenwacht. Um, this is the Dutch version of the uh, AA in the UK or the ADAC in Germany or whatever you call it, where you live. This is an Innocenti Mini Cooper. Check out the Innocenti badge with the British Leland L. Um, Innocenti was part of the British Leyland operation and they produced quite a few British Leyland or BMC or later BLMC cars and they make them better. So there are many details that are different um, to the original. For example, uh, a quarter light. Um, UK produced minis never had a quarter light. Um, the ones produced in Australia and New Zealand, they had quarter lights. Also, the interior is completely different from the uh, UK built Mini Cooper, and it has a su rather interesting sunroof option. Um, then we have the export badge. I think this is unique to Innocenti. I'm not sure about that. Um, I will find out. And there we have another Innocenti badging there with the uh, British Leland L and the Mini Cooper logo. It's a 1300, so it has the uh, 1275 cc unit um, in it. Now I've just shown you a Innocenti Mini, and this is a Di Tommaso. Uh, is it the Dorville? Um, yeah, it is a. Deauville. And that is interesting because um, De Tommaso built uh, a board Innocenti. It was an ownership of uh, Innocenti. So, what else? Beautiful Lamborghini uh, Yalpa. One of the few Lamborghinis I actually like. Let's take a quick look inside and there we have the engine with a lot of horses in it so this is interesting a Jaguar uh, what is it XK220 uh, XJ sorry XJ um, and this is interesting because I have a knowledge for you, you will never need. So if you own a XJ220 and you need new rear lights, source them from a Rover 214 R8 generation. So <laughs> there are many parts from the Rover parts bin. I, by the way, I love the look of the wheels. So the XJ220 had a six-cylinder engine and many say that was a huge drawback because it was super expensive. And this, by the way, costs uh, roughly 700,000 euros. It's quite a large car. It is very, very well long. So that was the XJ220 is showing off and Ford is showing off all its racing pedigree with a special display. Um, we show you some of the cars just like this. It's a legend. The Zag Speed Capri Turbo uh, 
Group 5. Um, almost 500 horsepower, 320 kilometers per hour, driven by a uh, German Klaus Ludwig, accompanied by a Lotus Cortina, <laughs> Ford RS2000, and a, another one in the WRC version. 1973 and another one Escort RS 1600 and a later one the Escort Mark II RS 2000 in rather flamboyant colors. Uh, let's go over to to that side. And here we have a insane look Trans Am Roush racing. That looks absolutely insane. NASCAR, I believe, but as I know nothing about race cars, but that, look at all the pipes. Wow. Top speed, by the way, 295 plus, whatever that means. So let's head over to the other forts. And as a defender, just have a look at this. Jochen Maas Ford Capri, 3100, Group 2, 280 kilometers, accompanied by a Sierra Cosworth RS500, uh, 1987, also driven by uh, Klaus Ludwig and Klaus Nitzwes and Steve Soper. Um, it is accompanied by a Sierra Cosworth. Is it something like the homologation model? I, th I think it is. But I'm, you know, I'm not a Ford guy, but you know, I love the Sierra. Then we have a Escort WRC. You can't have enough rally lights. And then another of my favorite Fords, and that is the RS200. Um, this was made uh, out of glass fiber and I think um, Reliant was involved um, maybe in the development or the production of uh, the body but there was a Reliant bit in the history of this awesome looking car. Um, Sierra Realites by the way. Porsche brought some interesting cars and the most interesting for me is this 928 because it's an early 928. It's the 4.5. This is a 1977 car and what I love about the early 928 are the seat covers. Checkered seats. Um, that looks absolutely amazing. And by the way, did you notice that? only uh, a driver mirror and it looks very very clean without the other mirror here at the, at the side of the car what a fantastic looking thing um, so I prefer the early 928 and this is a perfect example it's on old Dutch plates mm. excellent They were the beautiful BMW, was it the E21? Ah, I'm not sure, but it's a 320. It is on old Italian plates, the old style. And it's a Bauer TC, Bauer Top Cabriolet. And this is the Targa configuration. And here we have a Citroen DS, um, but this is very, very special. Let me show you uh, this badge. Um, it's the, well, the Chevron, you know, and there we have a CH, and that is for uh, Chapon. And this is a coupe version of the Citroen ID90. 
So Henri Chapon, um, well known for his Citroën builds. Uh, I've never seen these, uh, this coupe uh, version. Um, I've seen the Le Dandy uh, two times now. The Le Dandy was a coupe version made by a Chapron that looked way sportier than this one. There we have, by the way, the Henri Chapon Carrossier um, badge. Um, what do you think about it? Um, I think it looks kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's a very, very uh, unusual site because um, it looks so different from any other uh, Citroën DS. Um, fantastic. Hmm, it's probably one of my favorite cars here today. And there we have one of the most beautiful cars ever built. It's a French Facel Vega 2. Um, this car has so many details uh, to talk about. It's a fantastic looking car. Um, just have a look at this almost panoramic front screen. Then look at all, this, uh, all the chrome used here at the roof section here, right around the rear window. Uh, we have this sort of air vents. Um, I'm not sure what it is. Um, is it for ventilation? Is it part of the AC? I don't know. Uh, the interior looks absolutely insane. So this car looks so special and unique from every possible corner and perspective. Um, and I said, it is one of my very, very favorite uh, cars. And is, it is super rare. And there we have a later 928. It's the 5.0 GT um, in a, what is it? Is it aubergine or something? Uh, and it's aubergine and gray inside. Um, Impressive car, sold by CC cars. Um, I would still prefer any early uh, 928. Sunroof and everything. Oh, that's lovely. Now we come to uh, some of my favorite cars. Oh, favorite car in specific and that is the De Tomaso Longchamp um, because it looks amazing and it's a De uh, Tomaso and the history of this is really quite amazing. Um, first of all the design, good old Tom Tiada. He, uh, he basically designed the whole car. Um, I think the underpinnings are more or less the same as the ones used for the uh, Pantera. Could be wrong here. So the idea was, uh, I think Lee Iacocca at that time, one of the top heads at Ford, he thought it could be a good idea to have a, um, well, have another Di Tommaso. And a Di Tommaso that is, well, almost suitable for mass production. So well, they ended up with the, um, with the long chain. Shares quite a lot of bits, uh, I think, with the uh, Deauville. And well, they always use uh, the same parts bin. Uh, the rear lights are from a Alfa Romeo. Um, not sure about the switch gear. By the way, it looks very, very Maserati uh, inside. It reminds me a bit on the um, Quattroporti. Uh, headlights are from a Ford Granada or Ford Consul. There we have the D Tommaso logo. Um, yeah, the Longchamp GTS. It is one of my absolute favorite cars here today. Just have a look at the rear wheels because they, they are massive. <laughs> You know what? I can see myself in a long chair. What a cool car. And there we have another 
cool car. Uh, Bizzarini, this is a Grifo. It's a Grifo 5300 and this car looks absolutely insane. Um, I love the Bizzarini badge, by the way. Um, I know way too little uh, about these cars. Um, it's, you know, generally, it's not my cup of tea, but it's absolutely impressive to see this car. Just look, they're made with rivets, uh, like an airplane. So it says it's an ISO A3C. Inside it's a 327CI Chevrolet V8 body and it's an alloy riveted body. That is cool. Um, but for me, it's still the long chair. <laughs> so, okay, there we have the long champ, and then we have some uh, more usual De Tommaso material, Pantera GTS 86, and then we have a earlier 72 Pantera GTS. I prefer this. Let me know, what do you think about the long champ? It is super cool. Oh, just have a look at this. There is a Lancia Delta HF Integrale with this cool sort of hmm, bonnet, spoiler, thing, whatever you call it. There is, by the way, a later Delta. Um, I think it's not an HF. I, I will show you later. It's a red one. And while we all think of this Delta, the following generation, well, it's very cool too. We were in the Netherlands, we are near Eindhoven, and this is where this was born, the DAF 66. Uh, it's a Michelotti design, uh, one of the many thousands of cars. Uh, they were designed by good old Giovanni uh, Michelotti. These were built in Eindhoven. Um, these are prominent for its, uh, for its CVT gear gearbox. And you know, I am fond of the DAF 66. Um, the DAF operation was later uh, bought by Volvo and there was a slightly updated version of the 66 and that was rebadged as the Volvo 66 followed by the production of the um, 340 360 series Volvo that was by the way a DAF uh, development and the 440 460 and so on um, we have an interesting Alpha uh, the Alpha 75. Um, Alpha's last trans axle car. I think these are looking fabulous. Uh, this is a twin spark 2.0 in a beautiful color. I love the alloys. And you know, I love the wind deflectors. It's a feature I've seen now on almost all 75s. I've seen over the last uh, over the last years. So what a pretty 75 um, and we have a GTV. There they are. The Alphas. This looks great. It's a Alfa Romeo Alfetta GT1600. And the wheels look amazing. These are, uh, I think, Momo Vega uh, alloys. And they suit the car very well. I like it. GT Junior. Then we have a spider right here. So let's go and see what's going on right here. 
a very rare 190e. This is the Brabus uh, 3.6S. Brabus tuning. Don't know if it's an original Brabus car, but you know, it looks very, very Brabus. There we have the um, Brabus badge, the 3.6. That is cool. Um, there's a very interesting treatment of the grill. Anyway, um, something <laughs> exciting. Well, let's talk a minute about the Golf Mark III. So here we have a three-door Golf Mark III. It's a well, it's a New Orleans. That means it may have some special colors inside. Uh, this has a sunroof and the Golf Mark III is a very boring car apart from a VR6 and even the VR6 would not be my well favorite Golf of all but this looks special. This is uh, Aubergine. It has the uh, VR6. Just have a look inside the interior. It is aubergine inside. It has an automatic gearbox. Um, it is almost fully equipped. I think it has a uh, auto AC. Um, well, all the stuff you need. So I'm surprised by myself, but this is a very interesting and very exciting Golf Mark III. And it's accompanied by an Audi 80. So I am about to do uh, everything wrong because I know very little about uh, American cars. Um, this is quite obviously a Pontiac Firebird. <laughs> and that was, um, <laughs> it's bold. Uh, just have a look at the rims. There's another one, a Z28. with a Targa roof, leather interior. Just have a look at this. That looks cool. Can I see myself in it? Mm, nope. So, Chevrolet Camaro Z28 and Pontiac Firebird. General Motors badging, uh, <laughs> rebadging. Then we have a Maserati Maroc. So I'm not into supercars, but the Maroc is just beautiful. It's just a beautiful car. Uh, it is small, it's a tiny supercar, but utterly, utterly lovely. Are these the same Alpha rear, uh, rear lights used on the long chain? Hmm, I don't know. Well, BMW M5. Accompanied by a 3 Series. This is a, a 320. So we talked about De Tomaso. Uh, we seen the long champ, which was very Maserati-esque, if you will. And there we have a Maserati Ghibli. And there we have a Spider Zagato. And it's sporting the well-known and typical Maserati clock inside. We have an interesting uh, Morris Minor. 
there is the Morris Minor with a Morris Minor trailer. By the way, one of the most interesting cars is right there. It's a Fiat 128. But unfortunately, I can't get a proper shot of it. Um, there we have a Citroen DS. Just have a look at the massive <laughs> headrests in it. Some Peugeots. This is a 203. There is a Neue Klasse BMW 2000 Ti, a Peugeot 403, and a very, very old 302. And just behind it, a very, very beautiful BMW. Uh, this was, I think it was styled by Bertoni, the Bertoni uh, V8. Here we have the Bertoni badge, 3200 CS, very, very beautiful. And there we have the Neue Klasse again, again a 2000 Ti a T-Lux model. Let's get some more British Leyland into this video. There we have a mini uh, Leyland. Um, the Clubman with the Clubman front and there we have some more British Leland history because there is a stand full of Jaguar XJS convertibles but I prefer good old A-series Mini by the way early Volkswagen Polo quite an interesting color with uh, painted steelies that looks quite good. So there we have the Jags. Red, black, all the colors you need. There we have a BMW 3, th uh, 3 Series. And this is a Alpina B6, uh, no, 3.5, sorry, B6. 3.5 S. Yellow headlamp, so it's probably imported from France. It is sold and it has all Alpina badges possible on a BMW 3 Series. So let us enjoy some more Citroëns such as this CX GTI and then we have a DS20 and this is the um, estate and I love the louvers here at the uh, back windows of course there's some more and um, there are two number plates because you uh, can fold this part of the um, the rear edge down. Very, very nice. And we have a black turbo, GTI turbo. Um, love the wheels, by the way. Just have a look at it. Um, and I love how they use this hmm, sort of T for turbo on. Um, Many interesting places, just like here on the bonnet. Uh, it has a vinyl roof. It looks a bit out of place, but you know, it fits very, very good to this um, black CX. There we have a DS21. And of course, we have some De Chevaux right over here, bright yellow. We have a beautiful Citroen Mehari 
It says 4x4. Four four. So this is a super rare uh, Mahari 4x4. Four four. We have a two De Chevaux Azu, the uh, commercial variant of the uh, De Chevaux. These are looking pretty, pretty nice. And there is the Mahari 4x4 again. Another unusual show's favorite is this uh, spotless Volvo 480 ES. Uh, that was a radical approach from all the other older uh, boxy Volvo design with pop-up headlights. Um, I think these had uh, Reynolds 80 uh, Reynolds engines. I think these had Reynolds engines. Not sure about uh, about that. This is a automatic version of the whole car. Um, sort of a modern interpretation of the uh, 1800. The, wheel lo the wheels look stunning, I love the red color. It is one of my favorites here today. So while everyone remembers the Lancia Delta 1, the Delta 2 is almost forgotten. But you know what? I think it's a very fantastic looking car, especially in uh, red. This is a HP. Uh, I've seen a yellow HF uh, some weeks ago, and I think these are utterly, utterly cool. And they deserve, well, they deserve more. Because, well, you know, I see why everyone loves the Delta One, but just have a look at it. It is a proper 1990s car. Uh, this has only covered 33,000 uh, miles, uh, kilometers, sorry. And it look, it's looking absolutely great. Uh, let me know, what do you think about the Delta II? This is uh, the three-door HPE asset imported from Italy as it seems. Uh, by the way, there is more interesting stuff to see here. Um, there is another of my favorite cars and that is the Maserati Quattroporti. Uh, it is a massive car and just have a look at this interior. Quite a lot of Italian cars had to die for this beautiful, beautiful car. Of course, V8 powered, I think it's a 4.9, I guess, with the well-known Maserati logo right there. And that isn't even the only interesting car here. Just let's enjoy it again from that perspective. There is a Renault Clio Sports V6. Now the R5 Turbo's uh, younger brother on massive wheels and as with the R5, the engines here at the back. That is cool. So there is a Clio for the track. We had the beautiful Delta. Let's go to this lovely early Alpha Sud. It is on steelies with these uh, chrome smaller um, hubcaps or center caps, whatever. Um, black interior and it, you know, it has a reading light for the uh, front passengers. Just have a look at this uh, for, the, for the pens. <laughs> when you have an Alpha Suit, you need a place for your pens and this is perfectly perfectly done. Uh, there's another interesting detail. Just have a look at the grill. So there are these um, plastic grill inserts and these were used uh, in countries where it's very cold. So you can adjust it here as you can see. Um, I love that this is a 
three-piece part. This is very, very rare. So I've seen that on quite a few cars, but never on a Alpha. So this is a 1.2, uh, by the way. Honda's take on the supercar of its era, and that was the Honda NSX featuring a 3.0, uh, I think it's a V6 in the back. Um, also sold as the, I think the Acura NSX. And it's a very, very good looking car. And you know, that's, this Honda showed that supercars can be very reliable because it's a Honda. I'm at Albion Classics and they have very interesting cars. Um, let's start with this Unipower. Uh, the Unipower is one of the many cars uh, based, on, uh, based on the Mini. So it, I'm not sure if it, use it, if it uses the subframes of the Mini, but uh, definitely the front screen and uh, of course the A-series engine with a massive carburetor. Um, this is of course a proper track machine. Just have a look at the beautiful uh, A-series engine still with a Morris badge on it. So these cars were mostly made uh, of glass fiber. Uh, there is a brilliant series of books called Maximum Mini and all the Mini based cars are featured in that book, but there is more. Um, one of the cars I always wanted to see, and finally, there it is, is the Volvo Sports 1900. So, you probably, or you, you know, the Volvo 1800, the 1800E, the 1800S, the 1800 ES, but that all began with the Volvo uh, Sport P1900. Um, only a few have been made. I think 67 or so. It's a super rare car. Uh, the car was designed by um, Pelle Pettersson. And Pettersson, uh, he learned designing cars at Fruer. So as far as I know, it is not a Fruer design, but it is a Pettersson design. And I think Patterson later designed the uh, iconic 1800. But it all began with uh, this car and the history of the uh, P19 began in America with the Corvette. So the Corvette was uh, based on a, uh, uh, was a glass fiber body on a tubular frame. And effectively, effectively this is what this is. Um, is it looking good? Mm, it isn't. To be honest, it it looks a bit <laughs> it looks a bit strange uh, with this well, strange-looking grill right there. But it is so unique and it is so rare. Um, as I said, glass fiber body. I don't want to knock at it, but I wish to knock at it. Um, just look at this detail here, and I absolutely love the interior. Um, just. Let just have a quick look in it. So, all the gauges are in Swedish. Earlier truck, earlier temp, battery. Botched it with my with my bad Swedish. There's the Volvo Sport logo in the um, uh, in the rear bumper. So this is very very exciting, very very rare, uh, and a proper bit of. Volvo history here at the Interclassics in Maastricht. And I said it is one of my favorite cars today. Um, and <laughs> a Renault 5, but not any Renault 5, it's the Maxi 5 Turbo. Quite a lot of racing uh, pedigree. It's in full rally specification. Um, you, you just can't have enough rally lights, can you? So it says Carlos Sainz on it. So this might have seen 
the track. Just have a look at this massive rear spoiler. Um, this is very, very exciting. Almost as exciting as this. But it is. Now let us see what Alphonse Ruhl brought to the Inter Classic in Maastricht. And the first car that is catching my eye is this beautiful R107 SL, the Sportleicht. And this is a very, very early car. Uh, this is a 1972 350 SL. Um, plain white, um, of course, color-coded hubcap, hubcaps. It has the beautiful looking hardtop. Uh, if I had a R107, I would drive it only with the hardtop on because it just looks so, uh, so fantastic. Green interior and just have a look at it. It doesn't even have headrest. That is very, very rare. Uh, the early uh, Mercedes-Benz four-spoke wheel of the time, um, automatic gearbox, uh, this car, spent a good deal of its life in uh, Monaco and then in France. There we have the Polo Harlequin. So if you go to my Brussels video, you will see the car right there. Same for this beautiful 1984 Honda Prelude. But let's head over to this true gem and that is a Toyota Celica GT. Uh, this is a 1975 car with the uh, 1.6 liter engine. And you know what? Everything on this car is just as it has to be. Um, have a look at the alloys here. There is the old style Toyota logo right here. Um, some parts of the rim are painted in a what is it, yellow golden something like that and we have of course a good deal of striping beautiful Celica logo um, that is typical for japanese cars even today um, the different cars have their own logo so the carina had her own logo the corolla had its own logo and of course the Celica had its own logo. Um, a beautiful Escort RS2000. <laughs> One of Pininfarina's finest. Beautiful. I think this one here won a prize at the Inter Classics in uh, Brussels some months ago. So Peugeot 504 Pininfarina Coupe. And there we have a beautiful Porsche 365. Uh, what else? One to three series Merck. Uh, again, if you head over to my Brussels video, you will see that car right there. Now, this is utterly amazing. This is a very basic Peugeot 505 with only 18,400 kilometers on the Odo. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a base spec model, so it has the center caps, but no real hubcaps. Uh, the interior, it is spotless, absolutely spotless. 505 GR, let's peep into the interior of this. So, so if you are looking for a almost new 505, this is your car. And it's amazing. So I own a MG Midget. I'm a MG fan. And there we have one of my favorite MGs. And that is the MG RV8. Uh, a retro design by MG Rover. So MG Rover thought it's a good idea to bring the MGB back 
um, and that ended up with the RV8. It has the uh, 4.0 uh, V8 in it. Good old V8 that started life as a 3.5 and then a 3.9 and this is the uh, 4.0. Beautiful interior. Most of these cars actually uh, went to Japan. It was very very popular in uh, Japan and the cars from Japan usually have AC. This hasn't and Japanese cars had a Rover badge there on the fender. So I suspect this to be a UK delivered um, car. Uh, the color is really quite interesting. Um, most of the cars were delivered in some sort of British racing green. There were a few red cars and I'm not sure about this blue uh, color. Uh, I think, you know, it looks original to me, but well, I don't know. Speaking of favorite cars, uh, the MG ZT, of course. Uh, this is a super, super rare V8 left-hand drive. And this is a later car. There you see, there is already the facelifted front of the um, ZT. And this is a car I utterly, utterly love. Um, I love the Rover 75. Um, I love almost all the MG and Rover cars of that era, but this uh, specifically. Um, so at the end, the chaps at MG Rover, they thought, hey, what to do with this small amount of money we have over from our divorce with BMW? And they said, hey, let's put a large V8 into a good old Rover 75. Um, and in order to do that, they had to um, reconstruct the whole car because um, the 75 was a front wheel drive car and the Mustang engine they needed a rear wheel drive configuration so they did quite a lot with it so they <laughs> really threw some money into this car and I think it is absolutely awesome just have a look at this uh, bucket seats um, I hope it's uh, I think it's a little bit too dark um, the wheels look great, the color look great. Um, imagine this as the ZTT, the estate. That is a proper power uh, saloon. And it's almost forgotten and it's such a fantastic and cool car. So guys, that was my coverage from the Inter Classics. Um, I think I missed a lot, so this is a rather quick video about it um, you know the deal follow subscribe you know it see you soon